the perfect, ow, perfect paper flower heart. Welcome to part two of my paper flower heart tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to put together all the pieces that we cut out in part one together. Or if you purchased a do-it-yourself kit, then we'll be unboxing this together and putting it together in the video. Uh, stay tuned and you better pay attention. To make this piece, you will need a paper flower kit that you can purchase from www.thepapergarden.com and you will also need to get your own glue gun and glue sticks. If you are making this with your Cricut machine, you'll need a minimum size of an 8x8 inch shadow box frame. I use the brand Fundamentals, and you will need a glue gun and glue sticks, and I use the brand Sherbonder. Everything will be linked in my Amazon affiliate link in the description. You will need a paper quilling tool to help roll the paper flowers. If you do not have one, you can purchase it at www.thepapergarden.com. However, any quilling tool will work just fine. Last video, I miscalculated the numbers and here are the corrections. You need a total of 30 flowers, one heart, one eight by eight inch background. And if you are making a solid heart, you actually only need a total of 30 flowers and you only need 15 sheets of cardstock as you can put two flowers per sheet. If you choose to make an ombre heart, you need five colors in total with a total of 30 roses altogether. You need three sheets of color one, four sheets of color two, four sheets of color three, three sheets of color four, and two sheets of color five, which totals 16 sheets of cardstock. Now that I have addressed the elephant in the room, let's get started. Paper flower kit here. I'm just going to open it up, and this is what it's going to look like. And just open that. There are some stickers here and a thank you card and then the actual paper flower kit itself. A frame and that is about and within the actual kit itself we have some cutouts here and a heart, a background, and a quilling tool. So that's exactly what this says here. I'm just going to get started and I'm going to show you here how to roll them. Um, I personally like to wear a glove to keep myself from getting any paper cuts. Um, you don't have to, but I like to just because I tend to roll the tool so quickly that um, I tend to always get the paper cut. So let me grab my glove now. And the glove that you're going to be putting this on your hand will be the one where you actually hold the paper, which is your left hand here. So I'm going to actually take my glove off just for the first one so you can see everything. What you're going to do is you're going to grab your tool here and then you're going to grab your first paper flower cutout. And what you're going to do is, like I said, there are five extras in here, so make sure that you can grab one of each color to do a practice in case you make a mistake. And yeah, so grab your tool and you see the little quill there. You're going to grab your piece of paper and you're going to put it into the little thread of the or the little quill of the tool like that. And then you're going to push the tool all the way to the edge here of the flower. So the reason why it's very important to do that is because this here is the starting of the flower, which is the center of the flower. And something to make it easier is to put this to, uh, in a horizontal line like this and then start rolling towards you. And what you're going to do is make it as tight as possible. So hold with one hand here and use this hand here to roll the tool towards you and keeping it as tight as possible. And now, and as you're rolling it, you're going to try and make sure that this paper here stays the same throughout the whole entire roll. And if it doesn't stay the same throughout the whole entire roll, that is okay. I will show you how to fix it if you're unable to do that when you get to the end. Just make sure that you are rolling this tightly because that is going to be one of the most critical points in rolling the flower. So now that you're here at a few petals apart you can wiggle the tool out 
and you can see here that they didn't all stay the same so you're going to actually squeeze this like this until it's all the same now that it's all the same you can actually hold this and roll it all the way to the end and once you roll it to the end you're not going to glue anything yet you're actually just going to close this like that and hold it and now you can see here that your flower is still looking a little stiff and the reason why i say sorry i don't want to I don't want to unravel it, but the reason why I'm saying it looks stiff is because um, you can see that the rose petals are going straight. They're not naturally curving with a, what a regular rose would look like. And so that's why now this is your job to actually do that. And you're going to squeeze these petals into a circular shape like this to make it look more natural and break the leaves in and they're not stiff looking. And you don't have to be gentle, you can just squeeze away because you have tightened the circle so, so much. And now, if you, now you're going to flip this over like this and you're just gonna open this and you're still gonna hold on to it and you see how it's so tight together here, you can't see any gaps. What you're going to do is you're gonna naturally just put it in your palm and let it release. And since we squeezed it so tightly earlier to break in the leaves, you'll notice that it doesn't really unravel because you squeezed it. So you're just gonna, you know, let it naturally fall apart. And when it naturally falls, it's going to come to a standard size shape. And you can see here that this one is still, it's not fully, this one's still a little too tight. So you're just gonna flip this over and you're gonna loosen it up a little bit. And the way to know when to have the perfect size flower is when your circle is perfectly aligned like this with this rose here. So there you have it like that. And it's just gonna be a perfect rose. It's not gonna be too tight, it's not gonna be too loose. It's just gonna naturally have fallen like that. And the way you're gonna know that your rose is perfect is when you look here at the other side, I call this the rings of life. And I say that like a tree because the trees for the aging of the bark, it's like a circle around a circle around a circle. Um, so if your rings of life are even, then you know that your petals will be even on the other side here whenever you um, look at it. So for example, let me show you. If your one ring of life here is really large, has a really large gap. Let me, if one of your rings of life has a really large gap and then one of them on the other side is not have a large gap at all, you're gonna know that on this side, they're gonna, it's gonna look uneven. So like you can see here that there's a little bit of a gap on this side, but not a gap on this side because it's just uneven on the rings of life. So to fix that again, anytime you're just gonna tighten it all the way and then you're gonna squeeze the le uh, the petals in like a circle like we did before and break them in and just naturally let it fall into the circle shape of a spiral rose. And then just let it unravel. And now that this here is the perfect circle aligned, you're gonna take your glue gun and you're just gonna squeeze, put some glue on there and you're just gonna put it down like that. I know that took me a really long time to explain the first one, but once we get that, we can keep going with the others. So I'm just gonna do this one again, but I'm not gonna explain anything. We're just gonna go and we're just gonna roll it. all flat again and then you let it go and now we're just gonna keep on going I'm two thousand years later by now you should have rolled all 30 flowers grab your heart and time to assemble
To assemble this, you are going to grab your darkest color here, which is the one that has four colors. And you're going to grab the largest one that you see that you have rolled. I will say this is the largest one that I rolled. And what you're going to do is you're going to take one petal at a time and just bend it out like this. And you're just going to do that per layer until you get into a point of what your rose preference looks like that you like. And you're only going to do this to one of these flowers because this is going to be the point of the heart at the bottom. So I like it looking like that. And then I'm going to pick this here to be the point of the bottom. And then you're going to look at these two and see the two that are most similar in shape. And I see these two are the most similar in shape. They're going to go here and then this one will go in the middle. So now you have that set up. Let's glue on the bottom one, which is the first. This just helps you get everything in line and in order. Just glue it here at the bottom where the point is. And then now you grab the other two and just glue them on right next to it. And what I like to do on my projects, I like to work from the outside in because I feel that it helps me stay organized and it just is easier to see what is missing and what's not missing on your piece of work. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to leave this dark one here over on the side and then you're going to move on to the next color. So the next color, you need five of them. You're going to grab two that are similar in size as again, just like before. Um, I see these two here are good in size and then you're going to put the other three over here. And now what you're going to do is you're just going to glue these. You're just, if it looks a little bit not the right shape, just fix it yourself. And when I say if it doesn't look the right shape, if you just don't like the way it looks, just play around with it until it breaks into the, type, the shape that you like. Now, I'm just gonna glue it on to the outside border. Now, you're gonna move on to the next color. So you're gonna take another two, similar in size, two, and then you're going to glue them on to the next one. After you've glued those two, we're going to move on to the next color. Just same, same thing that we're just going to repeat two that are similar in size again all right and now we are moving on to the last color so you have this is here as the last color which is three of them and same thing, grab two that are similar in shape or size, and you're just gonna keep on going around until you complete the actual heart. It's perimeter. Sorry, I was just thinking about which one I wanted to put. not liking the shape of that one that much. That's three, two here, it's one, and two. Right, and then now you're gonna grab the second color, which is right here, and you're gonna grab one to put at the point. Now you have the perimeter first, and then we're gonna work inwards. So next color is this one as well, and you're just gonna grab two of them, same si sizes to put right in the middle up here. Two. 
two. And then you're going to grab your darkest color and you're going to do the bottom here in the corner. And then you're gonna grab these three, which is the second darkest color, and you're gonna put in two of them on the side. You got the two like that. And then now we're gonna go back to the second lightest color, and we're gonna put them right here like this. Now that you have that, you're going to grab the middle color. You're gonna grab one and you're just gonna tighten it and squeeze it in a little bit more just so it's more circular because it's gonna be a little tighter here. And now you can see that it's a little bit tighter and circular than the other ones. And then you're gonna squeeze it into this little corner right here. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing again. You're just gonna squeeze these and stick them onto each side. So this one can go like this here. And then we'll do the next one on the other side. Like that. And then now you can grab your second darkest color, stick that right here into the bottom corner like that and you'll see that there's this gap here and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna squeeze these tight and circular again and you're just gonna squeeze them in one and that's two and there you have it the perfect paper flower heart you are now going to grab the frame and the eight by eight piece of paper that it came with and you're just going to open this up like this. And once it is open now, the first thing you're going to do is you're just gonna Windex your glass just to make sure you know this baby is clean. Now Windex the glass from the inside just so whenever you put anything inside of it, nothing shows on it and you don't have to open it again later. And then once you Windex that, you're gonna grab this and you're gonna make sure that your sawtooth hook is facing the correct way, which is upside. Then you're gonna grab your background frame and place it over top, line it up like this, and then lift up your piece like that and just squeeze on some glue and stick her on. But do not put too much glue because then you might see it on the other side because it's 3D, right? So now that you got it glued down, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna again make sure the sawtooth hook is there like that. And now you're gonna grab your beautiful hearts that you just completed and you're gonna place it down onto the eight by eight frame. 
And in the last video, I told you that you need to use an 8x8 frame minimum because the heart will not fit in anything smaller than an 8x8 frame. You can see that now. It literally fits all the way to the edge. So what you're going to do is you're just going to place it wherever you want it to go. I always put it in the center because there's really nowhere else you could put this. And then you're just going to place it and then you're just going to glue under it the way we did it earlier. And you have to remember it's a hot glue gun, so you have to give it time for the glue to cool down so everything sticks. All right, and now what you're going to do is you're gonna look, take a look close at your frame and you're gonna see there's gonna be a lot of these little glue gun hairs all over your work because whenever you put together the paper flower heart, that is what happens. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna be patient and peel them off nice and calmly, however, if you do have a heat gun, I do suggest you can plug in your heat gun and you can use it to make the glue gun hairs disappear. So the reason why the glue gun hairs disappear when you put a heat gun on it, because it is a hot glue gun. So when you put heat onto the hot glue, the hot glue melts and then it, the big glue gun hair disappears. Um, obviously it doesn't dis obviously it doesn't disappear from the full entire frame because it's still going to be there but it's just not as obvious anymore so what i do is i actually come here and i pull these out the big pieces that you can see and then now i'm going to put the gun on and melt any pieces that i do not see and you gotta make sure that your gun is moving pretty quickly at all times because if you let it go for too long on one spot, it is going to burn your paper. And let me tell you, that is not fun because you don't wanna have to remake another. Take this piece of the frame, stick it on like this. And now you're just gonna stick this into the back of your frame into the frame doesn't matter where just as long as it's inside sorry doesn't matter which way as long as it's inside and then just close her up and then it should look like this here and there you have it all done guys thanks so much for watching Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up or leave a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you next time. Bye guys.